Alright, let's look at this problem. <clears throat> let's determine the angular velocity of the rod and the velocity of point C at the instant shown. Now, this is a great uh, <clears throat> one for the instantaneous center because I think you can, you can tell that the instantaneous center would be right here. Right, there's the instantaneous center right here. And so this distance, I'll call it RB, is uh, 4. This distance, I'll call it RA, uh, would be, well, if I've got a 4, 5, uh, this base down here would be 3 right here. So this one, uh, finding the instantaneous center and those distances is, is very easy. Um, <clears throat> now, I want to find the velocity of point C. Uh, so I, my first instinct is, well, well, V equals R omega VC would be R C omega of ABC. Um, that would be R C right there. Uh, but anyway, I, I don't have, a, it didn't really ask me to, actually, sorry, it did ask me to find the angular velocity of the rod. Uh, okay, so, so anyway, I need to find this angular velocity. How can I find that angular velocity? Well, <clears throat> start at A, right? Let's start at A, uh, and I'm looking at the imaginary disk, link A, B, C, uh, and V equals R omega. So V A equals R A omega of that bar, that rigid body. All right, so if this is 6 and RA is 3, omega <clears throat> would be 2 radians per second. All right, so now I can use that right here. V equals R omega. All right, so this distance right here, this RC, I don't really need to overthink this. Um, maybe look at I've got a rectangle and I've got an X and I've got an X that goes straight through the middle uh, <clears throat> and that length is 2.5, that length is 2.5, this length is 2.5, this length is 2.5. So this RC is 2.5, the omega is 2, so the velocity of C is 5 meters per second, uh, but that's the magnitude. If it just asks for the velocity, I really kind of want the it I, an I and J. So let's really uh, look at this. <clears throat> what direction? What direction would this velocity be? Uh, well, it would be perpendicular to this radial line. Right, the velocity would be perpendicular to that radial line. <clears throat> so you might think that it, it looks like it might be down along here. No, it, it's it's more of right that direction. Uh, so if I know that it's perpendicular to that pink radial line, let me kind of figure out where, what this pink radial line is at. It is, uh, we could th think about it a number of ways, but it is a 1.5 by 2 by 2.5. It, it, you see that, that it's at that angle. So my velocity <clears throat> would be perpendicular to that. Let's switch the x and the y. 2 by 1.5 by 2.5. All right, so let's just get that, pull that out right here. The velocity would be, let's see, the x component, 2 over 2.5, and uh, 1.5 over 2.5 down in the negative j, vc. So you might, you might could imagine this, if the magnitude is 5, uh, yes, this comes out to be 4. And by 3, it's 4i minus 3j meters per second. 4i minus 3j meters per second. All right, but <clears throat> so you see, the first thing I need to do was look at the imaginary disk, uh, find the instantaneous center to get this angular velocity, right? Using that instantaneous center is a good way to find the angular velocity uh, for many of these problems. Um, <clears throat> 
And once I had that, then I can find any point, any other point. So instead of going to B, I went to C. Um, and if I knew the R for C, if I knew the distance that C was away from the center of rotation, then I can use V equals R omega. Uh, but if I want to know the direction, it is perpendicular to these radial lines. So C would be perpendicular to that pink radial line. Uh, and you, you know, I mean, the whole definition of these radial lines, B, the velocity of B is perpendicular to its radial line. The velocity A is perpendicular to its radial line. Uh, so if you know the direction of the radial lines, then your velocity is perpendicular to it.